well hello friends now in part 3 we will see how to link our backend project with the frontend project but let me show you what we did in our part 1 and part 2 if you have come directly to this particular part so in our part 1 and part 2 we have created this landing page in which we have created this about and contact in this particular part I am going to show you how to code this view product in a SEO friendly manner and we have rectified few of the mistakes that we do when we use any template that is this active menu and we have kept this footer at the bottom so if I go to online shopping it will show me the front page now in this particular landing page I am going to change this category and I am going to make sure it is coming from database so stay focused in this particular part because we will be learning a lot many things like how to connect with the database using Hibernate and transfer your data from object to the database table so moving further we will be creating some DTO DTO stands for data transfer object and DAO which stands for data access object so whatever data that we are going to transfer from object to table will be residing in a package called as DTO and whatever classes we create to access the data from the database using Hibernate will be residing in a DAO now DAO is basically a pattern we call it as data access object pattern so we will be using that pattern to fetch the data from the database so we'll start first designing the classes required for our online shopping website so in this project I am basically going to design a electronic shop where I am selling few of the mobiles laptops television and all those stuffs so let me show you what are the classes that I have come up come up with now you can come up with your own classes and you can change as and when you learn so let me show you what are the classes that I will be coming up so I have a category and I have a product entity and this is related using one to many relationships so one category will have many products so like mobile will have many various mobile such as iPhone Samsung and Geoni and like that now if I move further so there will be user so I have decided I'm going to keep three types of user a supplier and an admin and a customer so customer can buy the product supplier can sell the product and admin can do the administration stuff like he can also add a product and he can activate a product he can deactivate a product he can activate a category or deactivate a category so there will be three types of user supplier administrator and a customer but a supplier can supply more than one product that's why it will have a one to many relationship with product but this would be only for supplier now a user can have more than one address that's why we'll have a one to many relationship between user and address so because if you go to any shopping website a user can have many addresses he can have many shipping addresses that you can see so he can select one of the shipping address on which he can ship the product so that's the customer part where they will have one to many address and uh, next we have card so every user will have a one card because if you go to any shop you will assign a one card so every user is mapped with a card that is with a one to one relationship now there would be another entity called as cart item so one card can have multiple cart items that's why one to many relationship would be there between cart and cart item now every item inside cart will have a one to one relationship with the product so in cart item we are going to increase the quantity of the same product and after increasing the quantity we are going to change the total price but there the relationship would be one to one between cart item and product now next we are going to have a order so every order will belong to a user so one user can do multiple orders from our website and every order will have a multiple order item that's why it will have a one to many relationship and every order item will we have a one to one relationship with the product so that's what I have come up across you can change it as per your need so we'll be creating this entities for our project and right now I'm going to start with the category entity so let's move on with our second step 
that we are going to create packages to organize our classes so as I told you we will be using DTO, DAO and DOIMPL as our data access object and DTO for our data transfer object so and this entire coding will be doing in our backend project because till now we'll be work we have been working in front-end project so now we'll move on to a backend project so let us go to our source main Java you can create new package so I'm going to use our convention of group ID dot artifact ID it's not necessary you should use convention but it's always good to use a convention so shopping backend dot and I'm going to use DTO and I will uncheck this I don't want to create this package info and click on finish similarly I'm going to create the other two packages new package DAO and IMPL so three packages I have created that is our DTO, DAO, IMPL and DAO now I will start by creating the category class in the backend project inside the DTO package so for category we need to decide some of the fields so some of the field which I have decided so I will just going to create a class and the name of the class I am going to keep it as category click on finish always make it a habit that you comment so I am going to create our private fields here first of all so the fields that I am going to create is private int id to uniquely identify our category then private string name to give a category name private string description and private string image url and private boolean field of active so why this active because later when I am going to delete I am not going to delete the category I am just going to say okay this is false so initially itself I am going to say it is active so the admin will have the right to deactivate this particular category so this is the five field which I have come across that is ID to uniquely identify name description image URL so I'm going to only store the path of the image URL and I'm going to initialize our active H2 only only the admin will have the right to deactivate this particular category now we have to create a setter and getter so that's where our encapsulation principles comes into picture so we are not going to give it direct access to our fields we are going to use our setters and getters so I am going to quickly create our setters and getters you can right click and you can go to source and there is this shortcut available alt shift plus s so next time I will be using that and here there is an option of generate getters and setters so I am going to select all and I am just simply going to say ok so let me put this command properly So this is what a category class will look like now we are going to create the DAO the data access object interface so and we are going to create the DAO IMPL class so this DAO interface I am going to create inside my DAO package so I am going to select our interface and I am going to give it name as my DTO and category DAO I'm going to say finish now here the first method that I am going to code is list because first we will be connecting this front end, uh, back end project with the front end project so I am going to go step by step so I am only going to create a simple list method so that I can return the list of category that I have in my project so for that I need to use the list 
interface available in our util package and I am going to make sure it is type safe using category and I am going to say I want to return a list of category and the method name I am going to keep itself is list now it is giving me error because I don't have any import here so I am going to do our shortcut control shift O now it will ask you which category you want so obviously we want our category that we created inside our DTO next and it will ask for which type of list so we are not using our abstract window toolkit list we are using our util list interface so I'm going to click on finish so make sure your imports are proper we are having our own category DTO category and our list from the util package now next I'm also going to create our DAO IMPL classes to access the data so to create our DAO IMPL classes I'm going to go into our DAO IMPL package click on class and I'm going to give it name as category DAO IMPL now here you can add that interface which we created so simply click on add and you can search for category DAO so it is giving me my category DAO okay and click on finish so this category DAO IMPL implements category DAO and here we have our list method now it has generated uh, auto generated method here so we'll move to our next step you know next step I have written okay we are going to add some dummy data to a static list only for testing purpose because as I told this entire part is based on database so I'm going to only create that static list for testing purpose and later on we are going to remove it so let me quickly create a static list of category list of category and I'm going to call it as categories and this entire thing would be static category so I'm going to give new array list even in our newer version you can skip that angle bracket category it's fine if you have written here so only thing you have to do you have to write here even if you skip it here it's fine it is giving me this error for import because we have already have a list as imported and we have category DO and category imported now I'm going to import our array list control shift O and you can see the array list class has been imported here now I'm going to initialize it in at the start itself so static and I'm going to create a category equal to new category and I'm going to add this category inside our list so adding first category so I can use those setter methods I'm going to do set okay I got this set ID method I'm going to do ID as 1 and I'll move on to category dot set name I'm going to give name as television set description this is some um, description for television category dot set image URL for storing image URL I'm going to use CAT as the prefix and I'm going to say category 1 dot PNG I don't have any image right now but I'm going to add it later and set active by default it is true only because that's what we did so it's okay if you don't you're not going to set the value as true now I'm going to need to add this category to the list so for adding it inside the list I'm going to use our list categories dot add and you can see since it is type safe it is giving me as I can add only category here so add and it will ask I am going to select our category so similarly I am going to also add few more categories so I am just gonna copy it from category and I am going to add our second category I'm 
gonna change the ID to two, and for television, I'm going to say this is mobile. Change over. category uh, one more I'm going to give as a laptop laptop and this would be category 3 dot png and I'm going to add that category so this is our third category now why I have used this static block so that as soon as our this Category do IMPL class gets created. This would be initialized. So our categories would be initialized. And after initializing, I can simply return this category list through our this method. So all I need to do is to say okay, return instead of null, return categories. So it will return a list of category that have that I have inside this particular categories, which is nothing but an array list. So we have completed this part. Now in my next part, I am going to show you how to link this backend project with our UI. So UI is nothing but our frontend project that we have created in the part 1 and part 2. So if you have not watched that part 1 and part 2, I would strongly recommend you to go through that part 1 and part 2 of this particular entire series. Thanks for watching.